in last lecture we studied about the concept of bt cotton how the bt gene is introduced into the crops and it produces a protoxin that is crystal protein which is later on when ingested by the insects it causes the death of the insect so that concept has many criticisms because many environmentalists believe that this bt may cause some problems in human beings indirectly if it comes into the food chain so there is another method for developing pest resistance in plants so that method is very novel and it is called as rna interference method in this approach the pest resistance is developed in the plant we will study this by taking the example of a nematode roundworm whose name is miledogyne in cognitia which causes a disease called as root knot disease in the roots of tobacco so in this concept the rna interference technique is used to develop the pest resistance by silencing the translation of specific mrna rna interference is actually taking place in all eukaryotic organisms as a method of cell defense so this technique is used in plants to develop the resistance against this pathogen so silencing of specific mrna due to complementary double stranded rna which is a type of rna molecule to enhance or inhibit translation of mrna it binds to the mrna and prevents the time translation of that mrna so in this technique the source of this double stranded rna which is complementary to the mrna is basically taken with the help of viruses which have got rna as a genetic material or by with the help of transposons transposons are the genetic elements which replicate via an rna intermediate let's now study how this process is done in this process the vector used is agrobacterium it's a bacteria which is a genetically engineered to introduce the nematode specific genes into the tobacco plant the nematode specific genes are introduced into the host plant and then the host plant is considered as a transgenic plant the dna introduced will produce both sense and antisense rna in host since sense and antisense rna are complementary to each other so a double stranded rna was produced which is called as double stranded rna dsrna and this ds dsrna will initiate rna interference so when the nematode infestation is there in the plant it is introduced the introduction of nematode genome takes place and there is when presence of double stranded rna this double stranded rna will silence the specific mrna of the nematode and this concept is called as rna interference so in the parasite this parasite will not be able to cause any harm to this host so as a result the transgenic plant becomes resistant and protected from the parasite isn't it a very novel method so this concept is very very important from exam point of view now let's study the application of biotechnology in medicine which has a vast potential so we can use this biotechnology 
in various sectors of medicines for example for the diagnosis and the treatment of various diseases with effective recombinant therapeutic drugs then second field is for the protection from various dangerous diseases by forming the vaccines for dangerous diseases third is through gene therapy new and healthy genes can be introduced or inserted to replace the damaged cells and fourth is targeted action of drugs by thorough study of the genomics so recombinant therapeutics do not introduce unwanted immunological responses as in the case of similar products isolated from non human sources so 30 such recombinant therapeutics have already been approved for human use and 12 of these are already marketed in india so let us study this application of biotechnology in medicines with some examples first is genetically engineered insulin so we already know that the deficiency of insulin causes diabetes which can be controlled by taking insulin at regular interval traditionally this insulin is not available so easily earlier this insulin was extracted by slaughtering the animals like cattle and pigs which is very inhuman also these animal insulin may used to trigger many immune responses like allergy and some reactions due to foreign insulin and was not very effective therefore the biotechnology was used where the bacteria were genetically engineered and that was used for producing human insulin in large quantities as bacteria can easily be grown in the culture medium so if we study the details of this insulin in human body the insulin is initially produced in the form of pro insulin you can see here the picture of pro insulin which has got three polypeptide chains a b and c but our body processes it and removes the c peptide and only the combination of a and b peptide which are associated together by disulfide bond is used for the uh, conversion of the glucose to glycogen so the big problem was that through biotechnology the scientists were able to produce pro insulin but this pro insulin was not being absorbed by the human body so another a very good approach a new approach was introduced by a company called as ely lily this ely lily company first created in 1983 the insulin actually what they did they actually produced these two short chains a and b separately a and b chains of the insulin separately and later on these a and b chains were linked by disulfide bridges so insulin synthesized as pro in hormone in all mammals was actually having three um, peptides so this three peptides 
are uh, processed inside the human body but here what they did they produced separate a and b and added them in the laboratory so using our dna technology two dna sequences corresponding chains a and b of human insulin were introduced into plasmid of e coli and they produced the insulin chain separately and later on these a and b extracted these chains were combined by disulfide bond and then human insulin was produced and this human insulin was successfully absorbed by the human cells so this was a revolutionary development in the field of biotechnology the same thing we can see here with the help of diagram here you can see chain a and chain b they were introduced separately and later on when they it, it was produced in bulk these were uh, linked together and the mature insulin was produced and this was a very successful venture in the field of medical science the next concept is of gene therapy gene therapy is a corrective therapy to correct or treat the hereditary diseases which is diagnosed in a child or embryo the methods where genes are introduced into the cells and tissues to treat the disease is called as gene therapy let us first understand the principle of gene therapy the normal cells when get inserted into individual cells or embryo with gene defect the normal gene will take over the function of and compensate for the non functional gene this concept was first introduced clinically in 1990 in to a 4 year old girl who was suffering from the deficiency of ADA that is adenosine deaminase deficiency so initially the child was treated with bone marrow transplantation and by enzyme replacement therapy which was not very successful later on this biotechnology that is gene therapy was introduced let's study what is what was done in this therapy so the method to treat ada through gene therapy let's study this so ada deficiency disorder it is a hereditary disorder caused due to the deletion of gene for adenosine deaminase enzyme adenosine deaminase is crucial for immune system function without this uh, enzyme the immunity is not developed so that is called as scid severely combined immunodeficiency syndrome just like aids in aids it is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome whereas here from right from the birth there is immune deficiency so in gene therapy the lymphocytes from the blood of the patients were isolated and grown in culture medium and the functional ada was introduced through c dna that is complementary dna and it was introduced into the lymphocyte through retroviral vector and then returned to the patient since lymphocytes lymphocytes have very short life span genetically engineered lymphocytes are periodically introduced into the patients if but if gene isolate from marrow cells in producing ada is introduced into the embryonic stage this could be a permanent cure let us see the 
the concept of gene therapy through this diagram here you can see number one cells are harvested from the patients then in the lab the virus altered so that it is not producing any disease into this uh, virus a gene is inserted and through this virus the gene is interest, uh, in, introduced into the lymphocytes so the altered virus mixed with the patient's cells and the cells become genetically altered and as a result in sixth one you can see the altered cells are injected into the patient's body and seventh the altered cell produce the desired protein so this is a concept of gene therapy if this gene therapy is done in the embryonic stage it is a permanent cure Now the third aspect of biotechnology in medical science is molecular diagnostics. In molecular diagnostics, the techniques are used to diagnose and monitor the disease, to detect the risk and decide which therapy will work best for the individual patients. So the treatment of a disease can be effective because it is very early diagnosis and understanding the pathophysiology is very important because if we know what is the um, disease well in time it can be treated well so in conventional method of diagnosis generally the serum and urine analysis is done as a result early detection is not possible whereas in molecular diagnosis we used recombinant dna technology we use the polymerase chain reaction and ELISA enzyme linked immunosorbent assay can be used so conventional method detect the pathogen of the presence of pathogen bacteria virus when this uh, disease is well established in the body and the symptom is there whereas in case of molecular diagnostics the even the patient patients having not showing any symptoms can be tested for the uh, entry of that pathogen. So this uh, molecular diagnosis has a great advantage in treating the disease well in advance. So let us see the significance of molecular diagnostics. So molecular diagnostics like PCR detects the pathogen even at very low concentration by the amplification of the nucleic acids of the pathogen by detecting HIV in suspected AIDS patients and to detect the mutations in the genes or in suspected cancer patients and to detect many genetic disorders. So PCR requires a single standard DNA or RNA tagged with radioactive molecule to hybridize the complementary DNA in clone. So by following the hybridization, the next step is autoradiography. Clone with mutated genes will not appear in the photographic film because the probe will not have the complementary with the mutated genes. In this way, we can identify the defect in the genes. Here you can see how the principle of PCR can be used for molecular diagnosis. The clinical sample is uh, collected. Here very minute amount of uh, defect is there. But when this DNA is subjected to amplification through PCR, we can find out the defect in large amount. So the treatment can be given before the onset of the disease in the body before the disease has established in the body so this is a very effective method
here you can see the diagrams of how ELISA is used for finding out the pathogen which is being also done in you know antigen antibody interaction done in corona test so in here you can see ELISA detects the pathogen by the presence of antigen or the which is a protein or glycoprotein or by antibodies synthesized against the pathogen so ELISA is another molecular diagnostic to detect the uh, this uh, antigen in the body another use of this uh, biotechnology in medicine is by developing the transgenic animals transgenic animals may be defined as animals that have their DNA manipulated to possess and express a foreign gene and these animals they are considered as transgenic animals so let's study how these transgenic animals can be used so these transgenic animals can be used for normal study of physiology and development transgenic animals are designed to study the different aspects of the genes like how genes are regulated how they affect normal functions of the body and its development for example the study of insulin like uh, growth factor involved in growth can be done by introducing genes from other species that alter the formation of this factor and study the effect that results also uh, information is uh, given about the obtained and the biological role of the factors in the body second is to study the disease transgenic animals are the models for human diseases they can be used for studying how the human diseases are uh, actually developing in the body so these models are for studying the human diseases in which investigation of new treatments for diseases and also gives understanding how genes contribute to the development of disease and the transgenic animals act as model for studying the severe diseases like uh, cancer cystic fibrosis rheumatoid arthritis alzheimer's diseases Transgenic animals can also be used for producing the biological products. Products produced by living organisms, some of which are um, medicines, which are very expensive. These examples are very, very important. For example, transgenic animals can be created by introduction of genes, which code for particular products, like induce organisms to produce desirable products. For example, human protein alpha 1 antitrypsin this protein is used for the treatment of emphysema and attempts are being made for the treatment of phenylketonuria and cystic fibrosis and a very good example is in 1997 the first transgenic cow rosie was produced which could give the protein and human protein enriched milk that is 2.4 grams per liter the human alpha lacta albumin was present in this milk that is in the amount of 2.4 grams per liter and it was nutritionally more balanced product for the human babies than natural cow milk next uh, vaccine safety these transgenic animals can be used to study how uh, this vaccine safety is there for vaccine safety vaccines are first tested on transgenic mice developed for the use in testing before they are used on humans transgenic mice are being used to test the safety of the various vaccines like polio if successful and found to be reliable they could replace the use of monkeys to test the safety of batches of vaccine 
and fifth is chemical safety testing transgenic animals can be used uh, when because they have the human genes uh, introduced into them so they can be used for testing the uh, chemical safety in animals that is uh, they are sensitive than non transgenic animals so they are exposed to the toxic substances and then the effect is studied so toxicity testing in such animals will allow us to obtain results in less time and this will be more reliable now let's study the ethical issues which are related to the concept of biotechnology manipulation of living organisms by human race requires certain regulations because ethical standards are required to evaluate the morality of all human activities that might help or harm living organisms so genetic modification of organisms have unpredictable results when such organisms are introduced into the system so this might be very dangerous if it is not regulated therefore indian government has set up organizations such as geac genetic engineering approval committee which will make decisions regarding the validity of gm research and the safety of introducing gm organisms for public services the modification usage of living organisms for public services such as food and medicines sources for example has also created problems with patenting now let's study about the patenting bio patenting what is bio patenting bio patenting is the use of genetic materials plants biological resources by companies granted with patent has triggered public anger and because these patents they have very flexible rules and because of that it has triggered public anger since they have been identified developed and used by farmers and peoples of specific country let's see this with the help of some examples if we take the example of rice over 2 lakh varieties of rice is found, are found in india which makes india the richest in biodiversity with respect to rice basmati rice one type of rice with unique aroma and flavor and there are 27 documented varieties of basmati rice grown in india in 1997 an american company got patent rights on basmati rice through us patent and trademark office and because of this this will allow the company to sell a new variety of basmati in us and abroad this new variety of basmati had actually been derived from by crossing with semi dwarf varieties and claimed to be an invention or a novelty which is actually some kind of a wrong notion the patent extends to functional equivalents implying that other people selling basmati could be restricted by this patent likewise several attempts have been made to patent uses Uh, products and processes based on indian traditions traditional herbs like turmeric neem tulsi therefore we should be vigilant and counter these patent applications either else other countries or individuals or companies may incash on our rich legacy and we may might not or may not be able to do anything about it so this concept of basically misusing this patent is called as biopiracy the patenting of plants genes and other biological products that are indigenous to 
other country. Therefore, piracy, bio piracy uses the bio resources by multinational companies and other organizations without proper authorization from the countries and people concerned, without even compensating compensatory payments. Okay, so this is a kind of a misdeed. Developed countries patent the knowledge and resources of the underdeveloped countries and enjoy the immense profits. The industrialization, industrialized nations are rich financially but poor in biodiversity and traditional knowledge. Whereas in contrast, the developing and underdeveloped world is rich in biodiversity and traditional knowledge related to bioresources. So traditional knowledge related to bioresources can be exploited to develop modern application and can also be used to save time, effort and expenditure during their commercialization. So when this concept is done without any proper uh, legal aspects or without uh, compensatory um, uh, kind of uh, deal, this is called as biopiracy. Therefore, realization of injustice, inadequate compensation and benefit sharing between developed and developing countries led some nations to develop laws to prevent such unauthorized exploitation of bioresources and traditional knowledge. Even in India, the Indian Parliament had cleared, has cleared the second amendment of the Indian Patent Bill that takes such issues into consideration including patent terms, emergency provisions, and research and development initiatives. So, we have through this chapter understood and realized that biotechnology can be used for such revolutionary uses in agriculture, medicine, and understanding the human physiology better as well as it can be misused for you know, some kind of you know uh, frauds and um, wrong uh, in caching the uh, biodiversity knowledge of the poor countries therefore this biotechnology is a tool which has to be used judiciously for the human benefit because both Profits and losses are immense in this field. I hope you have understood this chapter very well. Thank you.